detonating a $29 million ransomware attack from Korea this week on the secret letters of a hacker. What's up guys and welcome to the dynamic analysis tutorial of ransomware. So I'm inside my Flare VM machine and I have process monitor open and what process monitor will do for us is show real-time file system registry and process activity. I also have process hacker open and what we're going to look for is any subchild processes that may spawn from executing this ransomware because it is common for other malware to execute along with a malicious file. And I also have Wireshark open. Now by default, I disabled connectivity because I don't actually want this ransomware to call out to any C2 servers or connect to anything across the internet. So with that, let's go ahead and execute our ransomware. Oh, before we do that, we should expect the task manager window to be locked out. Um, we should expect to see a, a pop-up window, probably in Korean, because we assessed that through static analysis that this generated from Korea. Um, we should see a text file generate. Um, the background won't change, I don't believe, because this background from Flare VM is locked. And we should probably see registry modifications and registry encryption because we did see references to cryptography in our static analysis. So we should see registry changes and edits as well. And I have three test documents here that will probably get encrypted with something called ransom user locker because we saw multiple references to that in our static analysis. So the first thing I want to do is come over here to process monitor and we're going to filter by the process name and that is ransomware.exe. Go ahead and add that, click apply. So this is now filtering only for data that comes through ransomware.exe. And let's go ahead and execute this. We'll click run. And as you can see that it just rips through my computer and threw up a ransom note in Korean. So let's take a look and see if any child processes spawned. Here's a ransomware.exe. Doesn't look like anything else spawned from executing this. Let's take a look at Wireshark. Nothing came across Wireshark. Let's see what this is doing. It's opening the registry, putting registry keys, reading files. Okay. Let's take a look at this ransomware note. Here's the official mail that we saw during our static analysis. Here's their Bitcoin address that we saw. Here's uh, making a reference to Korea and references to probably how to buy Bitcoin. Everything that we saw during our static analysis. Unfortunately, I don't know how to read Korean, so I'm not going to be able to understand what they're saying. Uh, check out the README file and I have no idea what that means. Oh, let's see if our test manager got locked up. And our test manager did get locked up. So let me go ahead and minimize this. We can go ahead and stop this process from running now. We have enough to to go with to analyze. Looks like it's still it's uh, exiting its threads right now. All right, let's go ahead and kill this process. Terminate. Yep. We'll see you later. And let's take a look at this. Well, it looks like it locked up our text documents with ransom user locker. Um, we saw reference to that during our static analysis as well. And let's take a look at our process monitor. Let's go up to the registry summary. And in the registry, let's see the path. Here's our cryptography path that we saw during static analysis. There's another one. 
All right, let's go into our file summary. Sort by what it wrote to. It's the readme file that it dropped. It encrypted these three text documents, which are right here. Looks like those are the only files that it wrote to. It didn't write to anything else. Would uh Let's sort by what it read. Looks like it gathered a bunch of information from our Windows folder. I mean, it, it read more files than it wrote to. Let's take a look. Yeah, it wrote to four files, which would be one, two, three, and four, which is the README. Didn't write, didn't lock up anything else. Let's take a look. Looks like it doesn't lock up any programs. These are still accessible. So it looks like it only encrypts specific text files. Let's go by the extension. Yep. So here's the ransom user locker that it locked up. Three text documents right here. Didn't lock up anything else. Let's see. Go to network summary. Nothing on the network summary tab. So it doesn't call out to any C2 servers or anything like that, which we saw during Wireshark. So it looks like this ransomware only encrypts the file system and it doesn't call back to any C2 servers. There's zero network activity for this ransomware. Looks like the only way to contact them would be through that email address. Here's reference to the cryptography that we saw in our static analysis. It doesn't look like we're able to read any strings. Looks like that's locked from us. We're not able to access that. So yeah, it looks like it reads more files than it creates. So I think we have a pretty good idea on what this ransomware does. We know that it's from Korea. We also saw that it targets the file system and encrypts your documents. Uh, it doesn't target anything else on your computer. All your applications are still intact. You can still access things. So it looks like that it only targets your data. We also saw that it locks up your task manager, so once it's executed, there's no way of stopping it. And it looks like it encrypts it pretty quickly too. Within a few seconds, your, your file system is locked up and the ransomware note pops up on your screen with a Bitcoin address. Oh, I also noticed that it doesn't delete its entry point. It still stays here. Um, some ransomware you'll see that it self deletes so you can't analyze it anymore. Um, this one doesn't do that. So it looks like it's pretty basic ransomware attack. Um, it doesn't go over the network, it doesn't, it doesn't delete its entry point, and it only locks up your file system. So it's prying on people that have poor backups. And if we do a Google search on ransom user locker, ransom user locker targets Korean computer users, which is what we saw. Uh, uses a combination of AES and RSA cryptography and it asks for you to pay one to Bitcoin. It looks like in Korea they don't practice good backup procedures because this ransomware generated over 20 million dollars worth of Bitcoin payments. So really all you have to do is have up-to-date backups because this ransomware only targets the file system and not any doesn't lock up anything else but that however it does read a bunch of your information keep that in mind so thanks for watching guys and make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future tutorials and videos and as always hack me outside bro how about that